this is a classic line of best fit question or least squares regression line. Uh, it's taken from the Hazy and Harris textbook, uh, Year 12 Methods. So um, let's get started. There's the data. So if we go to uh, the graphics calculator to enter it onto the TI-84 uh, plus CE or TI-84 plus, you go to Stat, into Edit, and just check. I've already entered the data just to save a bit of time. And it is worth when students have entered that data uh, to make sure that they end up on a blank line and that's position 17. So let's just check with the dot. There are yep, 16 values, so that's okay. And secondly, just to scroll back up through them and just see if any of them don't look quite right. Uh, sometimes like, for example, this one here may say 14.5, so Mr. Zero out. So just worth just scrolling back up just to check. Okay, so what do we want to do with it? Well, we want to, to graph it. Uh, most students straight away go to graph, and there's going to be, as you can see, nothing here. So we need to go to stat plot, which is up here in blue. Press enter on the first one, turn it on, and the data already is in list one and list two. It's a scatter plot. Uh, and again, sometimes the students will go straight to graph again and still see nothing. You can see that I've actually got the grid lines on. I can um, turn those off it's into uh, format. So I'm just going to turn those grid lines off so they don't see those. Um, and the reason is that the window is set up wrong. So we can readjust the window. Uh, a lazy option is just to press zoom stat. So that's number nine, so zoom stat. And there is the um, scatter plot. So what do we then need to do with that? Well, with that scatter plot, then we need to put a line of best fit into that. So we, there's a really nice um, aspect to that. One is that we can go into stat cross to calculate. And if we go to the very bottom, you can actually get them to do a manual fit. So if you're teaching this in class, uh, then um, you can actually get them to get to have a guess of what you think it is. Or students yourselves, you can have a guess of what they think it is. But we're not going to use that for now. We're going to go back up to the top and choose number four, a linear regression equation, list one, list two. And the key thing is to use this store regression equation. I won't use it for a minute and just show you what happens. We go down to calculate. Uh, and there's the equation, but nothing else has happened. Uh, a couple of things are missing. One is that there's no R and R squared here. So I'll show you how to get that. And secondly, in the graph, nothing's any different. So that's quite frustrating because what we actually want is in Y equals the graph to be there. So let's go back into stat, cross the calculator again, number four. And, and down here, we are going to turn the store regression equation and we're going to put it into Y1. To get that, we could go into VARS, but there's a quicker way, which is alpha F4 is a quick key. And there's Y1. I could put it into any of the Ys. I'm just choosing Y1 as the first one. And enter now. Again, not the R and R squared is not here, but in Y equals, there's now a line. And in graph, it will now draw the line. That's pretty cool. Now, why is the R and R squared not there? Well, because in mode, the very first time when your calculator has been reset, in stat diagnostics, we need to turn that to on. Let's quit that now. If I press enter again, then there's our R and R squared, and we can start answering the questions from this um, textbook question. Now, estimate the number of customers per hour for 115.9 cents. So back to graph again. So 115.9, 115.9. Uh, so again, maybe you're questioning, well, which is my price? So we could go to trace and just get an idea that the X is the price. So to do that, the easiest way is to go into calc, into value, and do 115.9. We can see that it gives us error. And most times, uh, students will quit this so don't go to number two go to and it will say well it doesn't like this number why is that because the window isn't zoomed out enough so there's a way where we can go around that one is we can just change the x max to a bigger number and the other way is we could just do zoom out um, i probably would go to to window um, and just change that to um, let's go to 120 so it's a bit further out Enter. And now when we go to graph, it's just zoomed out a bit more. Uh, well, sorry, it's extended the x-axis. So now if we go second calculate, 
value 115.9 then we get our answer and obviously that wouldn't be a, a reasonable answer because the uh, it's a negative and we're looking at number of customers we couldn't have negative customers so um, that would be an elaboration on this question um, but and the reason we can't see it um, is because it's off down the bottom of the screen but if we went to a window and change the y min say to say negative 10 and then graphed it again second calc as I did before value 115.9 it actually even show us the cross where it is and the last question on here I think for now uh, is for 40 customers well for 40 customers um, we actually want where the customers, here's the customers, the Y value. So we want the Y at 40. Simplest way to do that is to go to Y and put a line in here at 40. And then when we go graph, then we can see that there's an intercept. And therefore we can calculate that intercept. Five, first curve enter, second curve enter. Guess it, can't be bothered because it's a straight line, there's only one intercept, and there's our answer, 105.3, um, I think that's, is it, let's have a look at the, what it is, it's cents per litre. Um, just remember that anything inside this range here between all the points that are given is interpolation, so it's more accurate, and anything outside here is extrapolation, so less, less accurate because we're predicting into the future or predicting into the past. And I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.